all time. I remember I used to watch this movie as a kid and I just absolutely fell in love with it. It is a Disney movie. It's directed by director John Turtletaub. Um, and in very like Disney movie fashion, it's based off of another Disney movie. This movie was released in 2010. However, it did get a lot of its ideas from another movie by Disney that was released in 1940. It's a movie called Fantasia and it starred Mickey Mouse, who we all know and love, and it basically is nothing like The Sorcerer's Apprentice from 2010. Uh, it's actually just a movie that kind of follows Mickey as he learns how to be a sorcerer. Um, I guess in the most basic terms, they were pretty accurate with that. Um, but with everything else, they were far from off. The main character's name in this movie is Dave Butler, played by actor Jay Baruchel. But... <laughs> Although he is the main character, I feel like a lot of people would like to say another very special actor could possibly be the main character of this movie. And that would be, in the movie's name, his name is Balthazar, uh, but the actor's name is Nicolas Cage. So in very Disney movie fashion, they have the whole historical context and the whole lore of, of the whole story at the beginning of the movie. So very early on, you kind of learn the whole folklore around all of this story. And it's basically just with the whole Merlin. Um, Merlin and King Arthur and Morgana and stuff like that, those old fairy tales. Um, so in the beginning, you learn that um, Merlin is battling Morgana um, and she becomes very powerful. So in order to stop her, Balthazar um, essentially traps her and her acquaintances into a nesting doll. So once Disney finishes the whole historical folklore stuff, we speed up a little bit from the year 740 AD to the year 2000 where we meet the main character, Dave. Now Dave is a young boy at this time and he's on the school bus and while he's on the school bus, he is drawing on the window and he's drawing King Kong. Um, and at one point, the bus drives past the Empire State Building because this movie is based in New York. And so it drives past the Empire State Building and you see King Kong hanging onto it. Um, and when he does this, he attracts the attention of a special girl. Now, in very middle school fashion, he writes a note to her and asks her if he, she likes him. She eventually answers and, and attempts to give him back the note, but in the exchange, it actually blows away. And Dave goes after chasing it, um, which ultimately leads to he, him meeting Balthazar. Now, during this exchange of when he meets Balthazar, a lot happens, but basically the whole main idea of this is there is a ring that Balthazar owns, and when Dave approaches it, the ring jumps on his finger, it's a little dragon, and it jumps on his finger and wraps around it, um, essentially choosing Dave. So after a big giant fight between Balthazar and this bad guy that Dave accidentally let out of the nesting dolls, um, we speed up a little bit to the year 2010. Um, during that fight, Balthazar had actually gotten trapped in the nesting doll with the guy, so he was trapped in there for 10 years, basically. Um, so when we do speed up, we see Dave. He's obviously a lot older. He's in high school now. Essentially, Balthazar explains to Dave that he is the chosen one. He is the one who is supposed to defeat Morgana. Obviously, um, anybody would be like, what? And he's obviously not straight on board for it in the beginning. As the movie progresses along, we get to see Dave learn how to be a sorcerer, hence the name Sorcerer's Apprentice. Um, and there's some really cool moments in there, some very Disney fashion moments, like brooms and mops coming to life and cleaning. <laughs> Eventually, Dave does end up dating this girl. Um, and my favorite scene of the whole movie happens around this point. Um, I won't ruin too much of it, but I will say I think it's the closest representation to real world magic. I won't go too much more into the plot of the movie. I don't want to give away any, any spoilers, but uh, 
Um, let's just say the ending is it's very interesting. So like I said earlier, this movie was released in 2010. It's directed by director John Turtletaub. Um, the movie runs for about 109 minutes. And surprisingly, there's not that many notable actors in here. I mean, besides the obvious one, Nicolas Cage. Um, but besides that, I mean, you have Jay Baruchel, um, pretty notable actor. Um, and then you have Teresa Palmer, who's also a pretty notable one as well, but nothing like that majorly stands out. Not Definitely not like Nicolas Cage. This film grossed about $215 million worldwide, and it's actually kind of interesting because although they did come, Disney did come out with another movie very similar to this, I mean it had the same name, um, it actually is based off more so of a poem called The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Now, obviously the movie didn't stick exactly to the poem. I mean, it is a poem. Um, and it was actually released in 1979 by, I'm gonna have to read this because I'm gonna butcher this guy's name either way. He's German, uh, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. And it has 14 stanzas. Now moving on to my favorite thing to talk about, and that is the technical side of this movie. This movie is fantastic on the technical side. I mean, the script writing could have been a little bit better. There were a little, little bit of uh, questionable choices on that side. Uh, for one, Nicolas Cage probably had one of the most boring roles that he's ever had in any movie. I mean, it's Nicolas Cage, you know, you're so used to seeing him so energetic and like crazy, but in this movie, he's just kind of boring in a sense. He doesn't really like have that much energy. I mean, I get that's his character. Like he's been through a lot. He's lived a long time, but at the same time, like it's Nicolas Cage. I feel like we could have upped it a little bit. There were also some very Disney type script writing in here, some jokes that aren't funny. And I think they tried way too hard to make it funny. There were also some very weird and interesting kind of shots that filmmakers don't really use anymore. For example, in the beginning there was um, a scene where one of the characters uh, was kind of fading out as they were going into the nesting doll. Um, and the film did this kind of weird jump cut thing to where they like faded them out but then brought him back in for some reason and then faded him out again. It it's kind of hard to explain but it looks weird in the in the film if you if you pay attention to it. Now getting away from all the criticizing I absolutely love this movie. I think this movie has some great shots. It had fantastic CGI. There is one scene where Balthazar is riding around on this steel eagle kind of thing and the CGI in it just looks so realistic like it's so good they did a fantastic job on the special effects with the magic sense of it um, it's kind of hard to capture good magic in films um, so they did a really good job of that now I will say I absolutely love the technical side of it I mean it yeah it has its downsides but I think the good ones outweighed them heavily. The scene I mentioned earlier, the set I, one I said I wasn't going to talk about, I feel like I should talk about it in this sense because I feel like it was the best technical side of the film. Um, and it was the scene where Dave is showing this girl um, his invention where he made a Tesla coil essentially that would connect to other ones and it would shoot electricity through them. Um, and that scene could have been terrible. Like they could have made it so bad, but they didn't. They did so good with it. The shots were fantastic. The special effects were fantastic. I, it's one of my most favorite scenes out of any movie. I absolutely love this movie. Like, I mean, earlier, you know, I said that I've grown up watching this movie. I used to watch it as a kid. I've seen this movie a hundred times. So I'm a little biased, but still, I think that doesn't matter. I still think it's a fantastic movie. So if you're looking for a fun movie to watch with your kids that you would also enjoy as well, 
I definitely recommend checking out The Sorcerer's Apprentice. You won't regret it.